So Lee Zeldin is the challenger, putting crime at the centre of the campaign. The polls, as I see them, show a dramatic tightening with the 42-year-old Mr Zeldin ahead of the incumbent governor, Cathy Hockul, for the first time. Is that how you see it? Because New York's only had one Republican governor since 1975, and more than 60 percent of New York voters voted for Biden in 2020. Well, it'll be interesting to watch, but I think even especially the business owners, the parents, they're looking at schools, they're looking at crime, they're looking at the tax rates there in the state of New York. And New Yorkers are proud long term of their state, but they're being forced out of this state. And I don't think that this former lieutenant governor, now governor, she has continued the bad Cuomo policies and she's struggling under the weight of the, mm. the consequences mm. of those bad policies. So uh, uh, we may see... Um, New York turned red as well. Yeah, and Zeldin has said he'll not mess with abortion rights, and many Democrats have openly said they will be voting for him as a result. Right, because abortion consistently polls around 7th to 10th as far as important issues to voters right now. And the Democrats keep doubling down on that, trying to make that the issue of the season. But when you've got gas prices, energy prices, inflation, crime, and open border, wokeness in the schools, there's a lot of things that New Yorkers and Americans care about. They're not going to be voting primarily on abortion. Mm -hmm. And the polling is continuing to show that less and less. So it's a losing policy for the Democrats and a winning policy for the Republicans to focus on crime. Wonderful. Now, Peggy, in Oregon, which is another Democratic stronghold, is the Republican challenger Christine Drazan ahead of the Democrat in the governor's race? As crazy and preposterous as it sounds, that's actually happening. Now, part of that is because there's a longtime Democrat, former Democrat, who is now an independent, who stood back and said, I cannot stand any longer to see Democrats ruin the state of Oregon. And so she has declared as a, a candidate for governor as an independent. And so there's a lot of thinking that the Democrat and independent vote will be split by Democrat voters. And so it is giving an advantage to the Republican, but you have to look at common sense voters like Phil Knight, who's the founder of Nike. They have been in Oregon since its founding. He has poured over a million dollars into the Republican um, Drazen's campaign. And he's not exactly a staunch conservative, but he realizes that common sense policies that will help mm. Oregon Oregonians mm. and help help businesses there mm. make sense. And so he's even supporting the Republican go governor candidate there. Amazing. And anything could happen on November 8th, but the tide is turning, I think. Look, back to and, Biden. I noticed Biden is saying he could drop dead tomorrow. So voters have the right to question whether he's fit to seek a second term in 2024. Perish that thought. But have a look at this, viewers. This is Biden congratulating Kamala Harris on her birthday. And he refers to her as the president. Watch this. And happy birthday, a great president. Uh, we know uh, your mom's always with you. Yes. Oh, Peggy, Peggy, sorry. I got to play that again. But just play that again. This is <laughs> unbelievable. And happy birthday, a great president. Uh, we know uh, your mom's always with you. Yes. Peggy, how on earth could that bloke contemplate running again? Except, I suppose, the Democrats, as we've said, don't have another candidate. Well, it'd be funny maybe if this was the first time he had done that, but he's done it several times. And he's also referred to her as the first lady. Yeah. And what we don't see in that clip <laughs> is that he also wishes her a happy 30th birthday. Now, I would blow you kisses if you wished me a happy 30th birthday on my birthday, but Kamala Harris turned 58. <laughs> <laughs>